everyone, RJ Fritz in sunny southwest Florida. Been here for a few years, retired, but that doesn't mean I can't introduce you to some very interesting people we have met along the way. Beginning with a very special glass artist in Naples, Florida. On most Friday nights, you can find Beverly Albrecht's giving free to the public glass blowing demonstrations at her Naples, Florida open air studio. And people really get a kick out of it. I noticed, uh, like, uh, you, you have the bowl shaped object, and then all of a sudden it comes out, looks like a fan, and then it, it's, it turns into something else. You know, it's, it is exciting, and you could never duplicate the same piece twice. So you want to keep it nice and even, with a nice, even wall of glass around the bubble. Beverly has had an obsession with colored glass since she would go to church with her grandmother as a young girl and find herself in complete awe of the beauty of the stained glass windows. I, I was just enthralled over the stained glass, and so I, I taught myself. You were so into it at that oh, age. absolutely. For over 20 years, Beverly Albritz has been spinning the steel rods and creating awe-inspiring works of art. And some days you have really good days in the hot shop, and some days nothing you do is right. But, you know, every time something doesn't turn out, it's a learning experience and it makes, and makes it a little bit easier the next time. With her husband, Bill, and three other workers, Beverly works in harmony to produce her glass works of wonder, true artful creations. Mitch Leonardi was just a teenager 10 years ago and became fascinated with glass blowing while watching Beverly. How does it go in as a as a uh, as a bulb a bulbous thing like a bowl and then come back out and you had it flying around like it was a dish? Yeah. How does that work? Well, what we do is we gather all the glass and layers and we put it in the optic mold there and we blow it out a little bit. Yeah. We attach a rod to one end and we break off the other end so it's hollow. Then we get the front half hot and as we spin it, centrifugal force will pull it open and it'll spin out all the way. Oh, okay. You only have about 15 or 20 seconds before it cools completely and then it's got to go away regardless of what it looks like. Not a lot of room for error. Right, no, there? it's a lot of work for just a few seconds of shaping. Again, this is the color and it's all pure pigment. It's glass and it has the same cooling rate or as our clear glass. On an outdoor cooking grill, you and I generally cook steaks at four to 500 degrees. These ovens in Beverly's glass cook stove reach temperatures over 2,000 degrees. The man is a threading ninja. He is really good. And as you know, if, if it's too hot, it flops and, and it'll become very thin. And if it's cold, it won't stick and it breaks. And it has to be just the right temperature and the right distance from the piece to get it on there real even. And he's great at it. You mentioned the color. Are the color of these little beads? Is that yeah, what it is? Yeah, it's called frit. And what it is, is it's, a, it's just pulverized glass pigment. Oh, okay. And they sift it through strainers to get each size. And there's six or eight sizes. individual pieces of what, leaded glass? Leaded glass. Tours of Beverly's home are also a part of the Friday night seminar. Special reinforcements are sometimes needed for one of Beverly's chandeliers. This one weighs 500 pounds. Usually about four months for four a chandelier. Four months to do yeah. one chandelier. Mm -hmm. These chandeliers all turn out piece by piece by piece. They are. They're done individually. I des you know, designed the cage according to how I want the chandelier to be shaped. Mm -hmm. And then these pieces are made and then they're attached. We, um, I use all stainless steel. And I have a stainless steel, high tension stainless steel wire that goes around this post with the, um, a, a noodle. Uh, so that I can really cinch it in tight. It's not going to come out of there. No, no, yeah. no. And so each piece is hung individually. Yeah. How in your lifetime have you had enough time to do all oh, the things listen, you've done? I'm so efficient. You have no idea. I work yeah. all the time. 24 hours. <laughs> I love yeah. it. I love it. Do you ever sleep? I do sleep. Right. I sleep very well. I just don't require yes. a lot of sleep. Like Edison, two <laughs> hours a night. <laughs> Beverly is a true visual person who prides herself in her ability to draw plans to a large scale in order to enable her clients to see the detail in which your product will finish. You cannot visually see all the detail. If you were to put a dragonfly in and a small sketch, it's going to look like a mosquito. Mm -hmm. You know, so for me, and, and even when I'm drawing, I visually like to see what it's going to look like. 
the proportions and uh, the composition. Beverly and her close friend, Elisa George, have a novel idea for people who have a loved one's ashes in an urn and sitting at home on the mantle. People started calling and saying, I have ashes of my animal, of my loved ones sitting on a mantle, could you do something for me? And so now it's a little inspired venture that was created out of a tragedy and it has such meaning for us and for everyone that's purchased a piece. The Friday night includes a tour of Beverly's Sculpture Garden, where area artists display their works. You know, people ask me all the time, you know, what is your favorite thing? Is it the leaded? Is it the carved? Is it the blown? But I love the medium of glass, and I think it each has its own place. She loves working with glass, and her stained glass work is nothing short of spectacular. For more information on Life to the Max, go to our website at lifetothemax.tv.